Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, again to Talking Dogs with Ante. I'm your host, Ante Lucin, and this is our 31st interview uh, in Mike this video. Mic off. Uh, Mic off. What I want to say, first of all, is to thank to all of you who donated the money for the operation of Little Nella, something that we have talked about uh, in my last uh, interview last Wednesday. And um, I'm really thankful to all of you. If somebody else uh, uh, would like to, to donate the money the, because the operation is um, uh, next week, then please contact me and I can send you privately or I can put in our Facebook group, uh, again, the details of the account where you can donate the money. The second thing what I want to thank you uh, is for uh, making the, our Facebook group really uh, uh, big in uh, less than 20 days. We have almost uh, 3,000 members already and there is a, a, a lot of talking and uh, a lot of discussions already there, which is great. I'm very happy about that. And then um, the third thing I want to say to you is that we are finishing this week the negotiations with some sponsors and I hope um, in quite a soon time um, we will improve even the quality of all of this and we will have uh, regular giveaways with the prices um, from uh, from our sponsors and it's going to make the, the show even more interesting. So um, exciting months ahead of us. Well, exciting in a way of, of talking dogs, not exciting uh, by the fact what is happening all around the world with coronavirus. But uh, we will start with the good spirit. Uh, I'm extremely happy to welcome tonight uh, my guest. He has been in the world of dogs for more than 45 years. So uh, not, he, not only he's a wonderful person, but he has a lot of experience um, uh, with uh, dogs, dog shows and all kinds of things. I'm sure that you're going to enjoy it. Also, it is my first ever guest uh, from India. Uh, Philip John, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you, Andre, Andre for inviting me. It's a great honor. And the important thing is tomorrow America uh, celebrates Thanksgiving. Yes. So I think of uh, the year that's gone by, which has been very difficult for all of us, especially the dog fraternity, our dog shows have been canceled and so on. But the important thing is that we have been kept safe and we have had uh, quality time with our families. There is much we, are, we should be thankful for. Absolutely, absolutely. And I like that we, we start the show with, uh, with positive words in these difficult times, as you said. Uh, what I want to say uh, to our viewers is that uh, the good thing uh, because of, of this coronavirus is that you are at the moment in the USA, because I think in India at the moment it's quite late in the night. So you, you have just uh, this interview, you said it's uh, 11 o'clock in the morning for you. So that has been also one of the things that we can take to coronavirus <laughs> if we need to be very positive in, in these times. Yeah. Okay, Philip. Before, before I start with all the questions, uh, let me already uh, read just a uh, just few things that we got um, uh, in the beginning of the interview. Anastasia Paunovic is saying, and again, hello, uh, Chetan from India is saying hello, Mr. Philip John and Ante Lucin. Um, Andrew Brace is saying hello to you both. I first met Philip and Premela when we, both, uh, when we were both judging at the Sydney Spring Fair show in Australia many years ago. The show was run by Bob Curtis, who was responsible for introducing so many overseas judges to Australia for the first time. I'd be interested to hear how Bob first discovered Philip, as I know he thought very highly of him and helped his uh, judging career down under. So uh, at some point we can, we can also mention that. Uh, Diane is saying good morning from California, USA. Christina, hello Ante, hello Philip. Julie saying good evening. Um, uh, Arun saying hello from Sri Lanka, Heidi from Finland, Brina saying hello to both of you, so nice to see you my friend Philip, great mem memories from India, uh, Anne Ingram is saying hello from Ireland, Marina hello from Moscow, um, uh, Srinivas is saying uh, uh, good, good morning, uh, have a good day friends from India, uh, Alex uh, Francesco saying it became a nice evening appointment these interviews, Hi to all of you, George Shogol, hello, Philippe and Ante, and many other, uh, many other people uh, writing nice messages. I will try to catch on all, the, on all the comments later on. We have people watching from Mexico, from Argentina, from Israel. So as usual, international 
panel of people, uh, uh, Philip, who are watching tonight, and I'm sure this is going to be a very interesting interview. What I want to ask you for the start uh, is, I know you are at the moment in the USA, but I'm sure that you have uh, friends and family who are in India. Um, I know that India has been uh, very much affected by coronavirus. The numbers uh, of the cases were extremely high. Uh, I want to ask you how is at the moment the situation there and what is actually happening in, in India with the, with the dog scene? Are there any dog shows or they have all been cancelled? Do you think that soon there are going to be some? What is the situation? Um, well, uh, India, as you know, is a very large country. So uh, the numbers uh, that you see are small compared with the numbers of the people who actually live in India. Um, India has more or less managed, the cities have managed quite well uh, to stay out of the worst situations. And the Indians have been quite disciplined and with the masks and staying home and social distancing and so on. Um, most of the malls and movie theaters are all closed. Um, but, and dog shows are completely stopped uh, from about March. This year, there's been no dog shows and nothing on the cards in the early of next year as well, um, which I think is sad, but probably the best way to go forward. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it is more or less the same situation like, like everywhere in the world. Um, obviously, there have been some countries who have managed to pull um, out some of the outdoor shows, but <clears> most of the most of the countries uh, have been completely with, without dog shows, as you said, more or less since March this year. Um, anyhow, let's start a little bit uh, with, with the old times and how did you get involved um, with the world of dogs? Um, did your family have dogs? How did you get uh, uh, involved? Uh, because I, I read in your CV that you grew up with, uh, with German Shepherds. But I don't know if that was a that was a coincidence or your family had them. So I want to find out a little bit more about that for the start. My grandfather was a doctor, and he was very interested in German shepherds. We used to call them Alsatians in those days, um, and uh, we always had a, a German shepherd at home. <clears throat> so I was familiar with dogs. But we didn't know anything about dog shows or um, I think that scene was where I used to live was there was hardly any dog shows. There were only five major clubs in India. Maybe your, uh, um, before I go further, maybe your viewers might want to know a little bit about the background of India itself. Um, India, as you know, was the crown jewel in the British crown for many years, and uh, if something happened in uh, in London, uh, it was there in India in about five to 10 years time. So the British Kennel Club started in, um, I think, 1873, and uh, we had our uh, Kennel Club started, I think, in 1886 or so. So uh, many people may not realize that being an Asian country, we have a an old dog kennel association. Um, but the, the the shows were in the major cities, uh, about four or five uh, eight places. There are four or five clubs which are over 100 years old. Um, yes. And um, uh, when the British left, uh, we were left with the Maharajas and the rich people who could afford dog shows and keeping dogs. So that is the scenario in which I, I came to the dog world. So it had its challenges. Um, I can continue with that if you would like me to. Yes, yes, yes. Tell us, tell us. It's interesting. Okay. Okay. So uh, it was only in 1971 when I went to a place called Kunur that I really started taking interest in dog shows because the Kennel Club of India was headquartered there. It was looked after by a lady called Mrs. Goldsmith. She was a French lady. Uh, the, wherever the secretary moved, the, 
the office of the Kennel Club also moved. And she lived in Kunur, which is a small town up in the mountain. And that is where um, I got into this world of dogs and dog shoes. And my first, um, we had gone uh, for our, um, we had gone to Kuala Lumpur in 1970. And there we saw a Doberman for the first time. How we fell in love with the breed. So when we came back, um, I had a friend of mine who had a breed, who was breeding some Tavy dog, dog with a Tavy bloodline from the UK. And he gave me a dog, he gave me a young puppy, which I enjoyed and I brought up and I started showing, had some success. Um, got a reserve CC when he was about nine months old. And one day, um, Nabam Nazir Yarjang, I don't know if people have heard his name, he was uh, one of the amazing dog people in India. At one stage, he had a kennel of 150 dogs. So anyway, he was coming uh, to judge the show, so he dropped into my house. I showed him this, um, my Doberman. I said, what do you think of this? He said, so oh, it's very nice. I said, no, tell me. He says, Philip, I suggest you enjoy him as a pet. He's a lovely dog, <laughs> but uh, don't waste your time taking him all over the country, which is expensive. I think if you're interested, get another dog. And that is when I went and got a Doberman from the Kimbertal Kennels from Pennsylvania. Uh, Kimbertal was breeding some good big bone dogs. And um, I had a lot of success with my first in court champion, Ebony Princess of Kimbertal. And I started breeding uh, some Doberman, my wife and I. But the problem was that India was not um, ready to have, you know, the, the people were not interested in buying puppies. The rich would always import dogs to show their dogs. And the people who were not wealthy did not want dogs. So I had problems placing my puppies. Either I had to give it away or give it to good homes and things like that. You can't run, you can't have a breeding program when you're uh, not able to move your puppies. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, that, is, that is my start of the dog game. Yeah. Okay, so so you mentioned that uh, that Dobermans were more or less your first breed, but it's interesting because I, you know before I, the interviews I always uh, Google my uh, my guests and I try to find as much as possible information. There was an information in one of the interviews that you gave that I think if I remember well in 1971 you you brought two silky terriers to India. Was that a mistake or? No, no, no. They were not. Uh, I didn't bring them to India. I bought them locally. Ah, actually, I bought, I bought them locally. It was actually when I went to register them. They were unregistered. When I went to register them, then I came across the Kennel Club of India. Ah, okay, okay. So that was... Because that, is when, was a... that is when the door opened. And I met a wonderful man called Bava Matthews. Mm -hmm. And Bava Matthews was assistant to Mrs. Goldsmith was largely responsible in bringing me to the dog game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that was a little bit, because uh, when we talked uh, uh, by messenger, you told me your first breed were uh, the Dobermans, but then I read this in the, in the interview that you had these silky terriers, and I didn't find that in other places, so I wanted to know. So it is, it was also the silkies um, in the beginning. Okay, what I want to ask you, and you have mentioned um, uh, a part of the problem, obviously that that you couldn't uh, place the puppy when you started breeding uh, when i invited you to be my guest you said to me um uh, for a difference of many other people that you had i have never managed uh, to be a big and successful breeder because um, i realized quite soon that being uh, sitting in india i would not be able to make a great success as a breeder so obviously one of the problems was at that time and probably still now is that it was not easy to to place the puppies 
Uh, what were the other uh, things that were like making it more difficult for the people in India to breed the dogs? First, first and foremost, we, ne we did not have enough of a gene pool. We had to import everything that we wanted. In fact, uh, when I was interested in Dobermans, I even went to Holland to meet Mrs. Neef of Netherlands Stan. Uh, at that time, she was the top uh, Doberman breeder in Europe. And um, I went to see her and um, I said, you know, I uh, want some tips and also want to one up your puppies. So she said, I'll give you tips, but uh, I have a yard long list of people waiting for my puppies because she just had uh, four bitches and two males. And, uh, but even people like Damison Kennels, Peggy Adamson from the US and all were uh, getting progeny from her. Um, but talking to her, it was very good. I was able to breed some nice dopes. Um, but again, the problem of uh, not having partners who would carry your puppies or your lines, etc., was a problem. I mean, I admire people like <clears throat> Francesco Cochetti or somebody who's been breeding um, Chihuahuas for so long. Um, you know, Chie Ejima from. Uh, Japan, Japan with Papillons and, and, and so on, you know, Franco Beriberi with his Labradors. That is something that I would have loved to do, but I don't think it was possible in India. Yeah. It is possible now. It is possible now because India is now got a huge middle class. Uh, I think our middle class is probably larger than the population of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um and one more thing is India was actually a vegetarian country. Uh, so having dogs and cooking meat, et cetera, was a problem. Mm. But now that's the dog food. That's interesting to know. With, but with dog food, you know, you, you just give some conflicts in yeah. the plate. <laughs> and the now dog's it's happy. Easy. Now it's very easy. Yeah. Now it's easy. So, so I think, I think uh, India is an excellent market for, for dogs. And I would request people from overseas to uh, to entertain very carefully, uh, clearly, um, a request from India for puppies. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me let me read just a few more comments uh, uh, before before we start with the with the other questions. Um, we had uh, Jenny saying hi from Finland, and then Vera Anra was asking, "Hello, are you married?" I don't know if it that. If that's for you or for me, in who she's interested, but uh, I, yes, Philip is married. I'm not, and I'm planning to stay that way. Uh, Desi Murphy saying hello. Indre from Lithuania, Anne Kips. Uh, then we have a message from uh, our mutual friend Janusz Opara from Poland saying hello, Philip. Hello, Ante. Seems unbelievable to share this evening with both of you. Regards to Janusz. Joyce O'Connor, another great friend of ours, saying hi, Philip. Uh, Donna Lucas, hello, Philip. Diane Anderson, hugs. Bruce Jenkins, hi from South Africa. Yurica, hello from CISAC. Christina saying hello, happy Wednesday evening. Ana Lucia Saletti saying hello. Kaya Meli saying hello. Um, another our mutual friend, Patricia Nemirovsky de Alcina uh, from Argentina saying hello. Such a pleasure to listen to both of you. Um, Anna Marta saying I love knowing each, uh, each country history in dogs. Nicolas uh, Canales saying hello to both of you. Uh, Ekaterina Domogatska saying hello, dear Philip. And then we have a qu question from um, our friend from, from uh, Israel, Zafra Sirik, and I'm going to mention it a little bit later. Um, and we are going to talk uh, a little bit about that. So I will be, be back uh, on that. But Zafra is saying, dear Philip, can you put enlightenment to the real roots of the Indian, Indian sighthound breeds? Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about that later on, so I'm sure Zafra will be happy to 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 hear also that. Uh, also, Annika Ultwait Moy has joined us, so a lot of important dog people are watching, and I'm very happy about that. Um, what I want to ask you, uh, Philip, uh, when I was uh, checking a little bit um, your CV, um, you have mentioned some of the breeds that you were breeding. Obviously, as you said uh, before, not on a high scale but you were breeding some of the breeds and there were other breeds that you obviously were just owning and showing. I would like uh, first to, to pass quickly through these breeds that you were owning 
um, just to, to mention and to say shortly your <laughs> connection with them. Uh, let's start with the Greyhounds, but because you told me that you had an English import Greyhound, um, which was the first ever top dog old breeds in India. Yes. Um, the Greyhound was imported from um, Shafley Kennels, Barbara Wilton Clark's uh, kennel in UK. It was an outstanding, uh, we got him out as a three year old. Um, I think she must have had a, something better in the kennels which she was showing. So this didn't show, wasn't shown much in the UK. And uh, actually, Nawab Naziria Jung saw him in the kennel and he said, Barbara, can I have that dog? And, and we, we got that dog and he, he campaigned him. Campaigning a greyhound uh, or campaigning any dog in India is a very expensive business because you've got to fly them. Um, you know, and India is a large country. It's like uh, uh, flying from Istanbul to Stockholm, uh, yeah. type of thing, you know, for shows. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, he got, I think, 16 best in show and dog of the year in 1980. Um, but we had no, no bitches. In fact, we, we ordered a, another a bitch in wealth following here, but Barbara had to, uh, they, the bitch whelped, the Barbara went into hospital, and I think they sold the puppies, they couldn't hold on to them, and we we lost uh, the, the, opportunity. the puppies, and also probably we lost interest after that, in that yeah. breed, so, though the breed, uh, I mean, I think my foray into sight towns was through that uh, or my owning that uh, greyhound. Yeah, yeah. Because then, then when we are talking about greyhounds and sidehounds in general, um, you mentioned that you have been involved uh, uh, not as a breeder but as an exhibitor um, and as an owner, uh, also Vipets and Afghans and Salukis. So obviously, you had you had a big interest in in sidehounds. Yes. So after grey after the, my Doberman, I. I went into Lhasa Apsos. Um, you remember when I came to Split, you gave me a, a, a simile of a yes, Lhasa Yes, Apsos. I remember, yes. I agree. Well, the, my Lhasas were from Tibet straight away. So they were villages. They were not beautiful uh, dogs like you see today in the show, showground. Um, but, I, you know, the temperament, the, the correct the texture of coat, everything, I got to know intimately about Lhasa's. I bred a couple of litters as well. From Lhasa's, I went to Beagles. And uh, I got a pair from Mr. Rangarajan, who was the chairman of the Kennel Club of India at that time, who was a very close friend of Kathy, Catherine Sutton of Rosa Kennels in the UK. Mm -hmm. So my, my Beagles went back to Rosa uh, blood clients, and we grew. Um, we bred a few litters of Rosa, but the Beagle was a difficult dog at home. It was such a sweet looking dog, uh, but if you scolded him, he made sure that he tore up your best pillow or your best Persian carpet when you had gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah he was very minded. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, we moved on from those that went to Dachshund, and we stayed with Dachshund. For a while. Um, talking about uh, sight hounds, um, Maharaja Bariya was the, my dog father in India. He, he was um, the chairman of the Kennel Club of India for a long time. Uh, he was this, um, his marriage was actually at one stage in the Guinness Book of Records. Um, he is. Uh, Amazing man, uh, with the best polo ponies in the country, a lot of good dogs, and a very fine gentleman. So he's the one who introduced me to Bob Curtis. And um, I'll talk about that a little later. But he had um, Afghans from, uh, from Australia, from... Um, uh, you know, the 
they were uh, from Australia, and also he had uh, Salukis uh, from there, and he also had a white um, white standard poodle, but the poodle mm -hmm. came and went. But the the uh, the Afghans and uh, Wendy Fletcher, Alahora, yeah. Alahora, uh, we have fine um, dogs. They stayed with us for a while. Um, again, I was able to look at their temperaments and their way. And if you ask the Afghan to come here, he made sure that he went the other way. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and the Saluki was jumping and climbing on rooftops and everything. So it was a, uh, when I, I realized that I should go into judging uh, to stay with my passion of, in dogs. So I kept all these different breeds to really understand the breeds, uh, to know their temperament. And when you keep a breed, you also uh, read up their history and uh, understand where they came, how they were brought together and so on. Yeah. That is the reason why I had so many breeds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh... Uh, talking about uh, this, uh, you are for sure going uh, to know how to answer to the question of uh, uh, a person that you have mentioned in the beginning, uh, our friend Francesco Rocchetti from Italy. He says, um, India has some beautiful German shepherds and also some lovely Dobermans. But when I was there in Chennai, I didn't see so many breeds in the group nine. It looks like people are more interested in big dogs than small dogs. Is it still the same nowadays, he's asking. Francesco is absolutely right. Uh, our strongest breed is Group 2, the working dogs. We have some very good quality um, uh, Rottweilers, Dobermans, Boxers, Great Danes, a lot of Great Danes. Um, and uh, I think our German Shepherds are among the best in the world because the German Shepherd people have pay huge sums of money to keep the German Shepherd. And one good thing about shepherds in India is that we have not, we have kept them along with their in the kennel club. You know, they haven't broken away into an SV chapter. And, and you know, in other countries you go and you see you know, judging shepherds, you get two or three or four. Uh, but here at the show, you get 60, 70, you know. Yeah. So uh, there's good depth. Um, our worst is probably the terrier group, uh, where we have very few terriers, maybe a few uh, walk fox terriers. Um, and then the, uh, in, in the toy group, we probably have pugs, a lot of pugs, but not much else. Yeah. You know, so people, are, are, people, people yeah. in India don't like uh, dogs with a lot of coats. I can, uh, I can see that. There is one, and also I think we are we are not good at grooming. Like yeah. our far far eastern brothers and sisters are fantastic groomers. Yeah. India India has not caught on to grooming. Not <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, I mean there are, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, grooming now. I know uh, a lot of people from all around the world, especially some um, young people from Russia, are now going uh, quite often to India and are helping with grooming and showing. So let's hope that also the, the toy breeds at some point will become uh, more, more popular there, but we will see. Anyhow, uh, what, I what I wanted to, to say is that uh, you mentioned all these breeds that, that um, you were having at home or showing or breeding a little bit. Um, tell me how did start your involvement with the Dachshund? Because that has in a way been a, a breed that uh, obviously you had for some time and obviously the breed that you like because you are a current president of the Dachshund Club of India and also as you told me you are the owner of a young uh, young Dachshund at the moment. Yes, yes. Um, my friend um, Sheila Narwar in Bombay imported a pair of uh, miniature Dach from the from Russia and the for formula Uspeha Monarch Kennels, Uspeha Kennels of, uh, in Russia. Um, and uh, she gave me a puppy out of that, beautiful black and tan 
I think he's about eight months old now. Uh, he, he's still with uh, Sheila in Bombay. Um, I'll probably take over when I go back. Um, but it's nice to be to have a, a action finally again. Our last action was a long-haired one from uh, from Melbourne. Uh, it is a lovely long-haired red. Um, but we've always had black and tan standards. India has well well quality standards, but we this are is, very this poor. Is, yeah, this is what I wanted to. They're very you. poor in. They are very poor. They are very, very poor in uh, in other other courts. Wires, there's no wires, and long hair as well. Yeah. Uh, the interesting, I think it is probably our connection with the UK that we had good DAX. Um, we imported uh, good DAX from the UK. Mm. And um, my friend, uh, this Navar Nazir Yarjan, used to breed his famous Paiga Daxians, which were absolutely out of this world. And even now, we have uh, very good breeders of Dachshunds. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you. Um, of course, now with the, with the, with the time of, of Internet and Facebook and everything, we can follow the things from other countries. Um, it, is, it is quite interesting to see that uh, um, in India, the, the smooth standards are very popular. And not only popular, but there is a very good quality. I remember um, judges going to, to judge in India and coming back posting the photos of the of the smooth standards and saying that they have found uh, excellent quality of, of dogs there. What I want to ask you, um, uh, are they very much influenced by, uh, by a British or American lines or there are also dogs which are, um, because obviously the American dogs uh, and English dogs are a little bit more heavy, a bit more short on legs and so on, or they, there are a mix of types or what, what is in general the type that you have in, in India? I think 15, 20 years ago, we had the heavier type. About, say, 15 years ago, we had the heavier type, um, very low to the ground, uh, maybe 10, 11, 12 uh, uh, kilos of weight. Um, but once we got really into FCI, and I met people like Horst Klebenstein and people like that, yeah, um, I think we realized that we have, we were not breeding the right type, um, and there was a bit of a correction, and so now we try to keep our DAX to about nine kilos, um, and not too low to the ground, um, and uh, so. I think our DAX have become more even in type and probably better, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Because there are a lot, as, as I said, there are a lot of European judges and, uh, and Dachshun specialists who were judging in India and they could find uh, dogs that could please their eyes. So it means that obviously yes. they have been of a, of a good type. Uh, what, what I want to ask you, Philip, you have judged obviously uh, Dachshunds all around the world. Um, everywhere, I, if I remember well, you have even judged smooth standards at the World Dog Show in Helsinki some years ago. Yes. Yeah. So uh, wh when you when you think about the the ducks and uh, let's say smooth standards, um, what would you say that are like the most important features of the breed that that are like um, saying that one dog is of correct type? What would you say are important things on on one dachshund? Um. <clears throat> I think the expression of a DAX is, a DAX is very important. Um, so the eye shape, color is very important. Uh, the markings have to be clear. Um, it's not, the neck is not short and stuffy. Uh, nor is it very long like a stalk. Uh, the top line is, has to be good, and it is a it is a long dog, but it is not too long. The ratio is one to one point seven or one point eight. Uh, if it crosses one point eight, it becomes starts looking too long, which is uh, because the, the spring of rib uh, has to go right there, right to the back, um, and 
and at the same time, the front uh, cannot be sort of barrel chested. It's got to have a, a depth so that the feet are kept parallel and not out or caved in. Uh, mm -hmm. These are important things about a, a, a duction. And the midriff, the, 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 the loin has to be strong because it's a long dog and it can be prone to weakness there. So it's got to be strong. And uh, the tail naturally drops um, and it goes down. If it curls, it should be at the last one third bit, not, uh, not earlier. Um, it's uh, got to be well balanced, the front and the hind quarters. The hind quarters should not be weak. It should be uh, nice and well filled out and not too high on hawks. The hawks are very important. Yeah. In fact, uh, when Ed Bevin was judging in India, uh, Ed Bevin from the US, he said, look, uh, Philip, I want to take back one of your dacks because I've not seen such beautiful hawks. Uh, this is something worth persevering. Yeah. Yeah. So we have many good things about uh, our decks, yeah. Yeah, and when you when you think uh, about all the good things that you mentioned now, um, if you think about the quality of the breed, let's say in India and in general at the moment, uh, what would you say that is something that is the biggest problem of the breed now? What it, what it is that that breeders are losing at the moment? <laughs> yes, now I think when I judged uh, at the World Show, frankly, I was very frustrated because. All types came in, you know, some of them are very high on the legs. I think in France, they're quite high on the legs. Uh, in other places, they get too low. Uh, in, I think the U.S. is probably a bit low on the ground. So different uh, types are, uh, are all over the world. So it's difficult to, and I think my winners were probably from Spain or from I think the um, world winner, if I remember well, was from Romania. Yeah, from Romania. Romania had some nice dogs. Yeah, I remember. Um, so I think uh, Dax is a is a dog which has to be balanced. Um, it has to be. Um, it's a small dog with a big heart. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's a it's, yeah. it's a fabulous dog. It's uh, you don't realize the value of a Dax till it actually. And it's not a yappy dog, you know, like usually small dogs are very yappy, but this is not a yappy no, dog. It's yeah, a, yeah, that's a true. big dog at heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, before we, we continue with the things, let me read just a few more comments um, uh, because I'm going to lose them at the end. Uh, Sole Ragna is saying, really looking forward to this interview. We'll never forget how kind Philip, well, kindly Philip welcomed my mother and I when we were in India. My kindest regards from Iceland. Um, Matteo is saying Buonasera, uh, Patricia De Konig is saying um, that she judged in India some beautiful dogs, including German Shepherds, Dobermans and Rottweilers. Um, Kay, uh, Keith Mullin, Mullan is saying, hi, Philip, I remember meeting you in India 2000-2001 while I was living in India. I used to show a white standard poodle. There wasn't many about then. And uh, uh, that's... Uh, uh, Kim is saying excellent quality in standard uh, smooths. So, uh, uh, Patricia was answering to Keith. Hi, buddy. Yes, I agree. German Shepherds were amazing when I was there. There was one owned by Nori way back that was stunning. So, yes, obviously, it is these breeds, like like you mentioned, German Shepherds and, uh, and the Rottweiler Dobermans, the breeds that, that were the strongest there. Uh, now, let's go back uh, a little bit um, to the question that Zafra has asked. Uh, because in your CV, uh, I read that you have also been um, involved a little bit uh, also with the caravan hounds. Uh, what I want to ask you, and I'm not sure about this information, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, India actually doesn't have any uh, breed which is officially recognized by the FCI, or I'm wrong. You're very correct, and I'm absolutely ashamed of that. Yeah. We have had these breeds for... We have had these breeds for generations. Not it was not developed yesterday, and they, but they are they are being given CC from I think the 80s in India. Uh, we be given CCs, and we have actually 11th group, which is the Indian breed. 
Uh, I think it's just because we haven't kept records and we haven't bothered to take it up uh, with the Standards Commission in FCI. But I think uh, the trouble is, you know, you're trying to put out fires here and there. So somebody has to really go after this. And I think maybe in a year or two, we will, we will get there. Um, our dogs, I think these hounds obviously came from the Middle East. Uh, through caravans and all that. And the main dogs we have are caravan hound, um, the mudol hound, which is a close cousin. Then we have Chippi Parai, we have Kombai. And in the north, we have Rampur hound, which is more like the greyhound, a bigger dog. Um, <clears throat> the, um, and these uh, Saluki, one is the Saluki type, the, the um, with a, a little bit of feathering and so on. Um, those are the um, dogs which are the caravans from the caravan breed. They have the mm -hmm. feathered caravan, which is also, and in fact, I think some uh, dog breeders from Finland took these uh, to breed with their um, with their Salukis in, in Finland. Because it is still a primitive dog. It comes on heat once a year, once a year only. And I think they've done some uh, good experiments with this breed. Mm -hmm. And tell me, uh, okay, you, you said that it is not only uh, caravan hounds. It, it is uh, a few of the breeds that are uh, at the moment uh, popular in India and, and uh, being shown in India on a regular basis. Um, is there one of these breeds uh, that you think that at the moment more or less has has the possibility to be recognized uh, by the FCI because as you said I mean India first of all is a huge country and it's it's really amazing that there is not one single uh, native breed uh, from India recognized by the FCI I think there are three three breeds uh, one is the caravan hound one is the mudol hound which is a cousin but not entirely the same as caravan hound. And uh, one is the, uh, the, then there is a dog called the Chippi Parai, but I think we need to do more work on Chippi Parai. And- uh, is, that, is, that, is that also a kind of a sight hound or it, it's- Yeah, it looks all of these, all of these are sight hounds. Okay. All of these are sight hounds. Um, we have a boar hound, a white uh, hound, which is absolutely white with uh, black dots on the skin. Mm -hmm. um, I'll remember the name in a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they are they are hunting dogs. They they are different from the Chitipare, but uh, also very powerful jaws. Mm -hmm. So I want to promote them, and I I want the world to enjoy them uh, because they are fantastic uh, dogs. So we can we can hope uh, in a, in a few next year that that one at least one of these breeds would be recognized provisionally by the FCI. I think in two years you'll probably get at least two breeds out there. Okay, okay, that would be great news. Um, uh, when we are now uh, on 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 that subject of of Indian and native breeds, um, because you have been quite involved. Uh, during your career with the Indian Kennel Club and, and uh, uh, a lot of clubs in India. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the Indian Kennel Club? Can you tell me a little bit more or less uh, how popular are the purebred dogs nowadays in India? Do you have a lot of litters uh, registers? Do you have a lot of dog shows? What, I mean, what kind of, of, uh, of hobby, let's say, it is in India? Is it something that is popular? Uh, is it growing? Is it stable? How it is? Because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, have never been to India, and I think that that would be very interesting for them to to know. Yes, as I said, India started um, in the 1800s, along with, with the, the British were here. They established kennels and kennel clubs, <clears throat> and we had fantastic. Uh, in those days, we had fantastic breeders of terriers. Of German Shepherds, of, uh, of Great Danes, and so on. But after they left, um, we had to get. It was only when the pet food industry started strong 
uh, the India Indian dog game began to thrive again. And uh, today our dog shows are big dog shows with about 400 to 450 dogs. Uh, if we have a national show, it could probably bring in 750, 800 dogs. Um, um, I think the most popular breed would be uh, Labrador, funnily enough. The largest number of uh, uh, registrations would be Labrador. Yeah, um, Desi Murphy wrote in one of the comments that when he jived in, uh, in India, he saw some of the very good Labradors. Yeah, we have good Labradors. Um, they have a lot of length and uh, German Shepherds, as you know, Dobermans, Rottweilers, Boxers, Great Danes. Um, these are the, uh, and in the smaller dogs, we have Pugs. And um, we have a few, in the, in the Spaniels, we have a good few Cocker Spaniels. Uh, but Labrador is by far the biggest. We have a mm -hmm. Few goldens, which are nice, golden retrievers. Yeah. Um, not uh, not much others to think of. Yeah. Um, in the toys, we have Pomeranian, which is a very popular breed. Pugs and Pomeranian are the most popular breeds here. And there are a lot of uh, international shows in India or not per year normally? Um, not, we are, not the, in COVID times. We, we were part of the British uh, dog scene till about the 80s, the, the late 70s, 80s, when we joined uh, FCI. Um, so we moved, for a long time, we had just one or two FCI shows. But now, the last 10 years or so, we have fully FCI. Last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. we're fully FCI. And we have a lot, fair bit of shows with FC, of FCI. Um, but... And national shows, as we call it, we would probably have about four FCI international shows. Okay. And tell uh, me, uh, do you feel do you feel that uh, that dog shows and 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 in general breeding of of purebred dogs um, is something which is going to become even more popular in India in the future, or you don't see that the, that or you think that now the numbers that you have that it's not going to grow much more? Is it let's say a popular hobby at the moment? Ante, the Indian population is 1.3 billion people. Yes, a lot. <laughs> However small the hobby is, the dog game will be very big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's also true uh, what you say. <laughs> um, I think it is just waiting to grow. Yeah, the the problem is that we had a, a about 10, 15 years ago. Ten years ago, we had a problem with the government not allowing imports of dogs. And that was very bad. Because of that, we have imports, but it has to come through Nepal or from, from all sorts of different ways, which are not above board. Um, so if we have, um, if that is allowed, India would be a huge market for dogs. And uh, unlike... Uh, you know, what people in the West may think that India is not kind to their dogs. India is actually very kind to animals. Um, and uh, it's a non, it's a non, it's a vegetarian country mostly. Yeah. Very kind to animals. Um, and I think people love animals, but the animals have more, more, more or less been domestic animals. But only now there is a huge interest in dogs because the dog food companies have come. And they are, they have helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, and and is once, it, the import, once the free import of dogs starts, it will be a huge thing. India will be a huge market. Yeah. And tell me, um, uh, as you said in the beginning, for you, that has been one of the, of the biggest problems uh, with breeding dogs. Uh, is it now better? Is it easier for the breeders to sell the dogs, uh, the puppies to the people in India, or it's still a problem? Yeah. No, no, a lot better, a lot better, um, because there's a lot of interest, um, and, and the gene pool is a lot better, uh, so we can get uh, good puppies in India. But some breeds are difficult, you know, like getting a good bulldog, 
or one of those kind of breeds would be difficult. But what we have in India is plentiful. Yeah. Good genes. And, and- Yeah, and I want to ask you one more thing uh, because you said um, Indian people are uh, nice to animals. Um, how big is the problem of the street dogs in in India? Is that uh, is that a big problem there? Uh, street dogs are a problem, but the government has done a lot to to eradicate that. Uh, basically, by keeping the streets cleaner than before, uh, it's basically uh, people leaving food. Uh, on the or on the streets that invite the dogs so um, i think they are a lot better now than before but yeah. it's not eradicated there is still a yeah. lot of street dogs yeah yeah uh, and and one more thing what i want to ask you because you mentioned uh, at some point there has been this problem of uh, of e- importing the dogs to to india uh, and i remember uh, maybe five, six, seven years ago Uh, Javier was traveling to to India to show one of of our dogs there, and I remember that the paperwork was very very complicated to do to enter inside of the country with a dog. Uh, how complicated is it now actually to to import the dogs to India? Is it a little bit better or it's still complicated? If you are bringing the dogs in, if, uh, traveling with the dogs, I don't think that is a problem. But if you are sending the dog. Uh, you need a lot of paperwork, um, and that is why dogs are normally sent to Thailand or somewhere and then brought from there into India, yeah. uh, which is not a happy situation. Uh, I think um, the Kennel Club of India should uh, take it up with the government very strongly to, uh, to say that you know uh, there is no misuse of anything. Uh, it is also helpful. and healthy to import dogs um and we are importing so many things india is the fourth large fifth largest economy in the world today yes so yes there is not no that sense. we don't have the money or anything yeah 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 so, and, and, uh, yeah and and my last question my last qu- question uh, about uh, about this because i think uh, uh, you know uh, for many people uh, india seems like exotic country in a way many people have not been there and and they are curious to find out um you mentioned that you have dog shows all around the country uh how is the situation for example with the with the hotels do you can you find a hotel in india which accepts dogs or that's very difficult um so what the way it works in india is for the dog show people to find hotels which will keep dogs and then they tell the exhibitors that these hotels are available uh, for keeping dogs and uh, or we find homes which would keep dogs for other exhibitors so it is possible to find hotels which are exhibitors oh yeah dogs. It, 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 it is possible yeah okay perfect okay i think uh, that was a little bit uh, uh, about your breeds and a little bit about uh, Uh, india in general which was uh, uh, obviously interesting for the for the viewers uh, let's do now some some quick questions these ones which are usually difficult for my guests and and then we will continue with 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 other subjects um okay my first question is um is there a breed that you never had and you would like to have oh there are many breeds uh, i never had and i would love to have <laughs> Yeah, you can't but, afford to have all of them <laughs> <laughs> but one that you would particularly like to have very difficult to answer that question um every the dog has its ups and downs you know yeah, i yeah. like a good 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 quality of any breed actually Ah, okay, so that, that's okay. Then, if you don't have something special that is that is very, because there are some people who say, "Oh, there is this. I have this dream that I would like to have this and this breed in my life." But uh, yes, there are people also like you who who don't mind which breed it is as long as the dog is pretty. I'm quite the same like you in that way. Um, okay, tell me. Uh, you, I know you have not been breeding a lot, but uh, one dog that you bred that has been successful uh, in India. that you can remember which dog you would mention 
I I bred a um, couple of litters of Doberman, and one uh, one of my breeding Dobermans did very well, and um, I lost uh, that bitch uh, a bit early, but he, he she I thought was even better than the mother, which came from Kimbertall Kennels. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other was uh, beagles. I've had some success with beagles and bred good beagles. I bred um, um, dacks. I've had uh, good standard dacks. Okay, um, so few, yeah. few of these breeds you have been involved with. Um, tell me, uh, and this this is usually a question that uh, my g- guests are trying to avoid. Uh, one Indian judge for which you have uh, extreme respect for his knowledge about the dogs and and uh, and uh, who represents in a way everything that for you one one dog show judge should represent I would say Nawab Nazir Jan uh, but he's no more he died last year um, he was an amazing man uh, for do- with dogs and I think he would be my Number one Your choice, yeah. yeah. And tell me uh, if you think of one dog person who is not uh, alive anymore and you terribly miss, who would you mention? Someone you have been very close in uh, the dog world and who is not alive anymore. Hans Letterman um, and uh, Uwe Stanskier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these were the yes, le- legends of the sport. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, tell me uh, if if you think about your past times an exhibitor, what would be the most incredible win of your career or one thing uh, that that you won and that you will never forget? I know you you said you had like fifteen best in shows with this greyhound that you had from the UK, but was it another dog that you showed that has been? There is something that you will never forget. No, by far the best was this greyhound uh, who is called Charles Fleets, um, San Martin. Yeah. Um, he was outstanding. But I've had uh, success with my long haired Dax. Uh, it was from the Merrily Kennels from Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had success with uh, my Whippet. I've had a Whippet, which is a uh, son of champion showman of Court Hill, um, a UK dog. So I've had, uh, shall I say, bits and pieces. Yeah. Not something that different. I would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me if if one uh, good friend of yours from outside of, of India would uh, ask you uh, which would be the dog show in India he should travel to. Which which dog show in India would you recommend? I would say the UP dog show, uh, which is as well. It's an old the South of India Kennel Club. It's an old kennel club, and also it's a very picturesque. It is uh, two thousand three hundred meters above sea level. Um, beautiful tea growing country and lovely lakes and forests. And that is where we held our 2013 FCI AK, uh, FCI Asia, Asia Pacific, Pacific show. I think, show. I think that we... was the show that Javier has gone. Yes, yes, that, that's the show yes. where he has gone. Um, okay, uh, tell me um, if you think now about, uh, about modern times or if you think about history, um, do you think of one breeder in India who has been extremely successful in this time with, with the quality of his dogs? Well, I think we have several. Um, one breeder I can think of was a Doberman breeder, early Doberman breeder. He's, he, he is the present chairman of the Gamil Club of India, S. Pati. He's had wonderful Dobermans. Um, then he's moved out to other breeds. Uh, Nawab Nazir Yarjang had excellent Labradors, uh, German Shepherds, and Dachshunds, mm-hmm. world class. Um, so we've had uh, breeders, uh, kennels which are 
you know, worthy for Very export. Yeah, yeah. And and if you think uh, uh, in all these years that you have been uh, traveling around and, and judging uh, dogs from other people, um, are there some breeders outside of India that has always impressed you with the quality of their dogs? Oh, yes, many. Um, I mean, they're too big, to, they're too much to be to talk about. They're too many. But... Yeah. Um, you mentioned the, if I, I remember say, well. I, the I, I, I would say, uh, I would say, uh, Ericsson, uh, the, the Saluki breeder from yes. uh, Sweden, Sweden and uh, his wife from Norway. Yes. Um, um, they were outstanding Saluki breeders. Um, then, there were so many. I mean, you have mentioned the, in the start, uh, if I remember. Francesco with the Chihuahuas and Franco from Italy with the Labradors. Franco, uh, it, uh, yes. Uh, the Labradors that uh, he bred were outstanding. I gave him uh, Barberi, I gave him Best in Show. I think it was in the Milan show or something. Mm -hmm. uh, no, for Firenze show, I gave him Best in Show. Um, Ochetti's. Chihuahuas are world beaters. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell me. Tell then, me. Uh, then, then I have then then I have a uh, Zena uh, Thorn Andrews from the UK, who I love her miniature wire dax, wire dax. Yeah. Uh, tell me, Philip, um, what would you consider uh, till now to be the the most exciting judging appointment that you ever had? Two. That's a big. That's a big ask. I, I, okay, I'll give you three or four, if I may. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the because I've had the fortune of judging three world dog shows, but I've judged uh, the Royal uh, Royal Sydney Royal twice, Brisbane Royal twice, World Earning uh, World Dog Show. 2010, 14, and 2017 in Germany. What I would put on top is the Europa Sega 2018 in Germany, where I was asked to do best in show. Yes. Uh, that was a great honor. But um, out of all the shows, I would say Spring Fair in 1984 in Australia, Colaro di Oro in Italy, the five and two summer shows in Sweden, the Eastern District Club uh, in Johannes Johannesburg, Cueve uh, show in Argentina, and Southern Counties in England. In the the reason why I say Southern Counties is that's the only English show I've judged. It was a great privilege that Angela uh, gave me. Angela uh, judged that show. Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me, um, uh, Philip, one dog that I don't need the name. You can tell just the breed and the occasion. Uh, one dog that you judged and you will never forget. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the uh, the Saluki bitch I gave the 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 breed to in World Show in Helsinki. Uh, was outstanding. Went on to win the group and then fourth best in show. Yeah, I think Ramon Podesta gave it the group if I remember well. Ramon Podesta, uh, yes, and uh, he got fourth best in uh, yeah. show. Um, the miniature poodle I gave uh, in uh, was an eight-year-old dog. Was, again, an outstanding dog. That was the third. Western show uh, that it had won. Every year it was winning. It was a Swedish dog. Um, and there was a Chihuahua from Spain, which was fantastic. I don't forget mm -hmm. the name. Um, yeah. The, amazing number of dogs. Yeah, yeah, of course. After 45 years, of course, there has been a lot of dogs that 
but but sometimes you know it's it's nice to remember some of them. A lot, a lot, uh, a lot of top, a top, a lot of top quality German shepherds in India. Yeah. I've given best in shoes, top quality. Uh, tell me, tell me, um, Philip, um, if you would be invited to go somewhere very far away uh, to judge, let's say ten ten days, ten shows in a, in a row, uh, which three? And and the organizer would say to you. You can bring three of your colleague friends judges with you. Which three judges would you bring with you? Oh my God! <laughs> Put me in a spot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I change this question all the time because people say, "Oh, I cannot say, I cannot say, I cannot say." But I think okay. like this is a little okay. bit easier. Three. Well, I think I think you have to have good company when you when you travel. Absolutely. So I think I would take Gopi Krishnan with me. Okay. Um, um, Dinky Santos is great fun. Yes. And, and one uh, more. And one more. Mm. Maybe Andrew Brace. Okay. Okay. That would be that would be a fun fun treat for sure. I I, I met Andrew actually in 1984, a long time yes. ago. Yes, and, uh, yes, he, he, he wrote it in Australia. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, and then uh, the last of the of the quick questions for you, Philip. Um, is there a, a, a young person in India that you recently noticed? Uh, doesn't matter if it's a young judge or a young breeder or a young handler that you think uh, it has the potential to become very successful in dogs in the in the future. Oh, yes, I think quite a few. Um, I think in the great uh, in the German Shepherds we have uh, a guy called Kapil Krishnamurti who has amazing um, amazing German Shepherds. I don't know think he's a judge, but he he breeds good German Shepherds. Um, I think the, um, there's a great Dane. Uh, breeder um, who breeds wonderful Great Danes, and uh, she handles. Um, her name is uh, Nal Nagolkar. Uh, she's an Indian breeder, and uh, Gauri Nalgonkar. Uh, she breeds wonderful Great Danes. Um, then there are breeders in in uh, Calcutta who are very good breeders. He has a breeder of Dachshunds in southern India uh, who breeds top quality standards. Um, so okay, there that's, are, that's enough. Few, there yeah, are yeah. some young people. Yeah, that, that's important. Yeah. Okay. That, and, that's, good, that's, and good Doberman breeders also. Good Doberman yeah. breeders. There is actually a terrific Doberman breeder called, uh, um, his name is Singh. Um, he is uh, from Bangalore, and he's taken his dogs to your U USA, and he's made them in the top 20 and dog of the year and so on. Oh, wonderful. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, let's go back now, uh, Philip, a little bit uh, to to your career as a judge. Um, you became an old breeds judge um, in India in 1977, and uh, you started uh, judging internationally in 1982. <laughs> Um, I want to ask you, um, in the times when you became uh, all breeds judge in India, uh, was it a long, was it a difficult process, and how does it, uh, when you compare it to the, to the pr present, how difficult is today to become a judge in India? When I became a judge in India, it was easy for those who had an eye for a dog. Yeah. And usually you were invited to be a judge. Uh, you know, somebody who a senior judge would say, why don't you take up judging? Um, and then you would start on it. Um, but today you have a lot of people uh, lining up. So you have to have a certain yardsticks by which uh, you have to choose. I'll come to that. At the time when I was judging, 
we had to do three shows under three different judges. You had to be in the ring with them. Uh, they could ask you questions, and you had to write uh, notes and reports from each dog. Mm -hmm. They would look at the, uh, they would look at it and ask you questions, and then they would say, "Yes, uh, he is worthy to be a judge. I pass him." So if you got passed by three judges, um, you were made a provisional judge, and you were a provisional judge for five years or 25 shows. If you've done 25 shows successfully, you, you came on the, as a regular judge. Um, so if you had an eye for a dog and if you had an interest for dogs, um, then it was easy. But if you didn't have an eye for a dog, you will never be a judge, Yeah. never be invited. But today, uh, most of the uh, the rules have been framed by myself. I was on the uh, judges training committee. So uh, we have put stipulations about they have to breed three champions in three different groups. Uh, and then they have to uh, go under, uh, they have to do group by group, not all together. So it takes a lot, uh, a lot longer. So, uh, so I, at the end of that, you sit for a written exam, um, and that exam is not easy. And if when you pass, you are given a provisional license. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, a, it's a harder thing. It's a harder thing, but we, we are a little careful about choosing judges. Yeah, of course. That, that's how it should be. Um, what I want to ask you, because you have you have mentioned before, you have judged a lot of uh, important dog shows all around the world. Um, is the is there still one breed that you uh, are always excited to judge wherever a big entry of one breed and there is is there still a breed that when you see that you are invited to judge you need to prepare a little bit more than usual because you feel you are still a little bit unsure about that breed andre um Ante, i prepare for every show whether i know the breed or not the night before the show, I look at what the breeds are going to come in front, and I look at the show. I look at them. Of course, there are some breeds that you have to look more deeply. For a dog show judge, it's not just the standard. Uh, you have to do much more than that. You have to do a lot of research. You have to have an eye for a dog. You have to have a photographic memory of the dog that you have seen in the past, uh, because you are always comparing what you've seen in the past with what is in front of you. Um, and I also look and see what this breed can do for the breed, what good it can do for the breed. Uh, so I try and avoid false judging. I try and see what is good and try and encourage uh, those. Um, people say you should not see who's the handler, um, which is true. But it so happens that good handlers have good dogs they're handling. Yeah. So you can't uh, put them down just because they are known handlers. So this is something that you have to also bear in mind. Uh, once they have got their CCs, challenge certificates, and so on, then you look at what how good they're going to be in the big ring. So these are the things that uh, goes through your mind when you're judging. Yeah. And uh, when, when you talk about all that, um, what do you find to be the hardest thing about the judging and what is the most exciting thing about judging dogs? The hardest thing about judging dogs is after the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a joke. Um, yes. so, uh, so when you're out there and you're judging and uh, all the judges are sitting here watching, and you go and pick one out and so that's my best in show and everybody here says you know <laughs> <laughs> what did she do they now? look at each other they look at each other and then you come come to the tent again and you say oh philip what a wonderful job that is a yeah. great job <laughs> <laughs> yes, <it happens>, <laughs> <laughs> so all that is aware of that so actually um 
it's something, it's intuitive. You see what is in front and you pick what is, what you think is good on that day. And um, I don't do false judging. I try and see what is good, what is going to do good for the breed. Yeah. And tell me, um, because obviously uh, you have judged a lot of dog shows in India and uh, uh, you mentioned yourself that uh, India has been under the huge influence of UK dogs, but later on a lot of American dogs came also. Um, how different is, uh, how difficult is to go from one country to another and judge uh, different types of dogs in the same breed? For example, uh, Golden Retrievers or Dobermans or the uh, setters or the things that are completely different in, in different breeds. How difficult is that uh, to, to adjust your eye to another type of, of dogs? Andre, Andre, that's a great question. That is the toughest thing for an all breed judge, especially if he's judging all around the world. Um, and many judges, I think, make the mistake of going to another system, another country, and still sticking to the, the thing that he, he has in his head. He has to adapt. A judge has to adapt. Um, nobody is calling you to place a dog because you are the last expert on it. They want to see how it compares with the rest of the dogs and what you feel is the overall quality. If it's got something very negative that is should not be in the breed. Like in uh, Dachshunds, I don't like dogs which are too heavy or too low to the ground and cannot can barely move. So those would be penalized. But I think you have to look and see what is uh, what that dog can do good for the breed. And I think if you go to um, Europe and to US, um, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, many breeds are totally different. And so you have to put on the U.S. cap when you're in the U.S., and you have to put on the FCI cap when you're in the FCI country. Yeah. 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 Um, but it is it's not difficult if you're, an if you're an experienced judge. I don't think it's a difficult thing. You also look at the standards once again of that place. Okay, I want to ask you one question, Philip, um, uh, which has been uh, uh, written in our Facebook group uh, by one of our viewers um, some weeks ago. And uh, because you are uh, you are judging uh, already for so many years and you have judged dogs um, uh, all around the world, you can make uh, maybe give a comment on that. Um, he says uh, lots of lots of learning from brilliant minds, experienced dog people, and excellent questions. Uh, but I would like to make a comment, though. At your recent interview, I believe you made a comment about how breeds are changing with time. Those were not your exact words, but that was basically the observation being made. As much as I do see trends in certain breeds in different countries, I am strong believer that breed type is to be preserved, not changed or improved upon. Do you feel, uh, Philip, that many breeds uh, nowadays are changing? Uh, or if you think uh, of some breeds that when you started judge them have uh, changed really a lot, a lot uh, till today. And do you think this is good That's or right. this is bad? That's a good question. Um, I think you have to respect the country of origin. Um, the dog, if it has come from a country of origin, I think I would give that the highest mark. Um, if, it is, if there are any changes, you have to see how, whether those changes are detracting from its original function or uh, breed characteristics and so on. Uh, most of these dogs are uh, there for hunting or guarding or so on. Of course, there is not that much of hunting going on in many parts of the world. Uh, so many of the gun dogs are kept, say, in India, for instance, more for showing and more for companion rather than going into the forest and shooting down ducks and so on. So you can't say, oh, it can't. So fit for function is, is an important thing, but um, the country of origin which has the dog is also important. 
Now, when I say that, I will run into difficulties with America because a lot of breeds are from England and Europe and uh, uh, Oriental, uh, China, and so on. But uh, many breeds have changed uh, in the U.S., um, English Springer and so on, quite different to what is in, in the England, or in the U.K., or Europe, and so on. So I think as a judge, you have to weigh, weigh the, it's not just what you like, but what is correct for the breed and whether it will detract from what the breed was meant to be. Yeah, because I don't know, let, let, let's, let's think uh, uh, about the breed that you started with, and these are the German Shepherds. Um, obviously, the, for example, German Shepherds have changed a lot in, in the last uh, 40 years. I don't think that that 40 years ago they looked like they look now so uh, it is uh, the thing that um, the breeds and the type of breeds are changing during the time so let me start with my own story i went uh, to canada to judge a few years ago um, and a lot of american dogs came there uh, i think it was in um, Anyway, it, it, it was in Abbots, Abbotsford or someplace close to the American border. And about eight, there were 18 dogs, German Shepherds, under me. My heart sank and I kind of threw out 17 of them. And one, I gave it the ticket. And uh, after the show, the lady came to me and said, obviously, you don't like our type. I said, type I can forgive, but I cannot forgive uh, unsoundness. When, when the, and it was too low to, on the pastern, and the feet were splayed, uh, when the hind quarters was, was exaggerated and therefore unsound. Um, I'm sorry it can stand beautifully, but if it, when it moves, I know what kind of a dog that is, and I cannot put up on some dogs. So I may not be the favorite in the U.S. to judge German Shepherds, uh, but I don't mind. But uh, I think German Shepherds, uh, there, has been, there was also some exaggerations going on in, the, in Germany, but I think that is now being corrected. Yeah. I think more or less they're finding the right German Shepherd now. It's a difficult breed. German Shepherd is not an easy breed to breed as well as to judge. So a lot of experience is required. Yeah, I agree. Um, anyhow, Francesco Cocchetti made also a comment about this question of, uh, of differences in type. And he says, um, you must switch your brain and follow the standard of that country. But the problem uh, is that in some countries like South America or Asia, who are under the FCI, uh, there are so uh, there is so much influence from the states, and time is not what the FCI standard describes. Uh, for example, golden retrievers. Yes, because it happens sometimes that you go to the FCI countries, but the dogs that you find there are unfortunately completely other type than the than the what the FCI standard requires. But yes, this is something that we will have to work on. Francesco is right. Um, the dogs in Asia especially the Far East, and the dogs in South America are very American in type, mostly American in type, in many breeds, not all, but in many breeds. Therefore, it is a very difficult thing to judge uh, dogs in these countries because you have to see um, what the dogs are and also see what is the function of the dog and also apply your brain to see how it will be function or it was bred to be. So it, it, is a, it, it is not an easy thing. That is why experienced judges are required to judge in these countries. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Okay, I want to, uh, to ask you now um, to comment on one thing that I have found uh, when I was Googling your name. Um, and you made an interesting uh, comparison, and I would like to ask for your um, uh, comment on it. Um, I have found one interview with you in the newspapers, uh, which are called the Hindu, and uh, it was saying like um, Philip John, international breeds dog judge, 
makes an interesting analogy between his current vocation in the canine world and his expertise as a former tea taster and auctioneer. This is where his tea tasting and auctioneering abilities come in handy, he believes, because judging a dog is all about segregating quality, like it is in tasting tea. You need to expertise to taste 100 to 200 cups of tea a day and grade them on the basis of quality. As an auctioneer, to you, uh, too, you have decided very quickly, so the brain is programmed to view quality and make quick decisions. It is called an eye for a dog. Correct. That is true. I, I firmly believe that. I think my profession has helped me a lot uh, to be a judge. I, I, I hope I, uh, my judging is fair. Um, the tea tasting is uh, where you are also involved with quality. You're looking at the quality of the, uh, the, the, the tea leaf, the liquor, uh, the color, and everything. So you are having to decide very quickly uh, the various grades of tea. So um, the other thing that I was I studied in my in college was history. So history uh, put together with this tea tasting helped me a lot with my dog judging. Yeah. Uh, because I would I would I would research on where these dogs came from. It was not just where the dogs started, uh, where it is today, but how did it originate? Uh, what were the breeds that were used to make a breed? So those were the things that were of interest to me. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so what, what, that's, what is your yeah? That's very interesting analogy because, as you said. Uh, in a dog show, you can have 100 to 200 dogs and you need to to uh, place them, let's say, quite quick uh, by the quality. And obviously, uh, I don't know a lot about uh, about uh, your profession as a as a tea taster. And uh, but obviously it is quite, quite similar to that. Yes, yes. And as, yeah. uh, in the tea, uh, you have to also say almost what is the origin of the tea? So when you, it's a photographic memory that you have to develop. Yeah. Uh, another thing that that uh, that you you were mentioning a little bit before, and and um, and I have read also in this article, and it was interesting to me to find out. Um, let's say if when you started and when you think like this, uh, it is the same now because obviously now you know almost all the people and. Many times uh, your friends can enter the ring or people who are organizing shows or whatever. You said in this interview uh, that when you were starting uh, judging, uh, you promised to yourself that while you may make mistakes, you will never be influenced or biased by anything except of the quality of the breed. Is it still possible? Uh, you, you were talking also a little bit about that. Is it still possible to enter in the ring and look only the dogs? It is possible, but I think the people who know, I know are at a slight disadvantage because I'll be a little stricter with them. Yes. <laughs> because the, the, their dogs have to be really good. <laughs> yes, um, yes. You know, um, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, this is my first or second major show uh, in Cochin, and I was judging. And uh, the president of the club at that time was Mr. Rangarajan, who was the managing director of the Hindu newspapers. And he sent um, two dogs uh, to show under me. One was a big, one was a beagle, and uh, one was a dachshund. Um, so the beagle was a rosat beagle. And the Dachshund was uh, also an, an English import. But I put up a, a locally bred Dachshund above that. Above him. The next morning, he called me from Madras, and I was in Cochin. And he said, uh, Philip, how was the show? It was very early in the morning, so I was a little leery-eyed. <laughs> I, I said, yeah, the show was fantastic, and uh, thank you for sending your dogs. Yes, 
Well, what did you think of them? It was very good. I said I gave the Beagle third best in show. And he said, what happened to the deck? I said, oh, I found a better deck. So then he said, do you know this deck was uh, the best dog in so-and-so, and it's British import, this, that, and the other. So I said, well, uh, I, was, I call him Rangapa. Well, that case, don't show it to me because uh, I'm not going to be worried about where it won or whose it is. And don't call me at this early in the morning and I bang the phone down. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We, became, we were very good friends. I mean, it was it was just a blip. He was disappointed because... And that, I think, is very important for a dog to be not under pressure because there are friends outside the ring, inside the ring, and so on. And when you are in the ring, you have to look at the dog and what it tells you, what is the communication to your eye. Yeah. Not what did it, what did it won yes, yesterday in the ring or anything. Now, that is how I look at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, one of the last questions um, that I usually ask, uh, ask to my, my guests is about... Um, how they see the, the, the future of the sport. Uh, and I'm going to ask you something about that. And I'm going again to, to connect it with the interview that you gave for this magazine. But before that, uh, let me just ask you if you can say a few words, because uh, it was Francesco Cochetti who was, uh, who was asking about uh, this. And then Patricia De Koning said she would like to know the same. Uh, he was asking you, um, uh, Philip, I would like to hear something about Muthol. I was in love with this breed. It must be probably one of the of the Indian breeds. Yes, Muthol Hound is a cousin of the of the um, Caravan Hound. I think they originated from the Middle East. They came Caravan because they came in caravans. And uh, the caravan hound went towards the Hyderabad side, and the Mudhol hound went towards the Karnataka side, more southwest. Um, and they developed uh, with slight different characteristics. But they are beautiful dogs, absolutely stunning dogs, um, long legged, great strides, majestic. Um, and even though they look frail, they're very strong, good, strong necks. And, and is that, uh, they're actually... Huh? Is that one of the breeds that you're hoping that soon could be recognized by the FCI? Yes, yes. yes. The Mudol, the Caravan and the Mudol are the ones which I'm hoping would be uh, number one and two. Okay, excellent. So I'm... I'm sure many people will be happy to hear that. Okay, yeah. we had also a few comments. Uh, Brinia Tomer was saying, um, yes, uh, Francesco, um, this is so true, and the lack of written critiques in South America does not help the situation. Talking from my own experience, I also think that too many judges accept the US influence. Um, and uh, Francesco is saying, yes, could be very easy to have only one standard written uh, from the country of origin. But, uh, well, that is not going to happen so soon, I think. Uh, okay, uh, let's, let's, let me uh, ask you this question, which I said before, um, about uh, how you see the future of the, of the, of the sport, uh, a little bit connected to India and connected to the rest of the world. Because in the same interview uh, there in 2017, you said uh, there are many uh, concerns that are troubling me a ban on importing breeds will hurt India's breeding program in the long term. Uh, the new activists lack proper understanding of the subject and hence bring prejudice to the sport. Scientific collection and disposal of garbage from streets can address stray dog bannies. Uh, so it is obviously some things that, uh, that you were thinking of uh, years ago um, about the activists and about all the new laws that are coming. Uh, how is the situation in India? And when you compare it globally, what do you think that are, let's say, the, the biggest concerns for the, for the future of the sport? I think uh, places like India and the Far East and so on, which are 
comparatively new with the sport, I think will do well because more and more interest is uh, happening day by day. It can only go one way, it can go upwards. I don't know so much about the West, but uh, some some things may need to change there. I don't know if, because we need to bring the young people into the game. We see the occasional young handler, uh, but I would suggest that as much um, as much encouragement is given to the young younger people to come into the dog game because it is fresh blood that will keep the just like breeding. You need fresh blood. Yeah. Even in dog showing and so on, you need young this thing. So I think each, like for instance, the senior handler must take on juniors and get them ready for the next stage and, and so on. But I think uh, this, the, this sport is not going to die down. Um, it, it is a healthy uh, future. And I don't think the pet food industry will let it lie down either. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, and and a little bit connected to your to your uh, uh, what you said now, and actually it's going to be uh, my last question for you tonight uh, is uh, about young people because you said it is so important to to bring young people to the sport and to import, let's say, fresh blood uh, to the sport. Uh, what would be your advice to somebody young? Um, who wants to become uh, successful in the world of dogs? That's a tough question. I have a grandson who's 12 years old. He has just got a beautiful Labrador. Um, he's very keen, but I'm not sure how interested he will be for dog shows. Um, we also have a nice Cocker Spaniel. English Cocker Spaniel, American bred. Um, I have a miniature, I mean, I have a um, miniature Dachshund in India. My son has Great Danes and Labrador in, in Wisconsin. And uh, um, where is he? In Minneapolis, where, he's, where he lives. Mm -hmm. So young people have dogs, but how keen they would, so the, the dog show people must go out of their way to see how they can make things a little more interesting to the younger people. So I would ask all show organizers to think outside the box and see what can you do to hold the young people's interest. Then very, very important that there is young blood. Yeah, yeah. We agree about this. Uh, okay, uh, uh, that, that has been, let's say, uh, our positive, we started in a positive way and uh, we are finishing in a positive way by, uh, let's say, an invitation to, to the young people to join. And, and uh, what I always say, and you mentioned it before, uh, I think mentoring in our sport is very important or, or the will of the people like you who have huge experience in dogs and, uh, and uh, uh, a long tra transition uh, of of uh, being uh, traveling around, seeing dogs and everything, that you have a will to mentor the young generations and in a way to to open the the, the door. And also, uh, it was among um, among one of the of the comments. Uh, somebody said how kind you were when they came first time in India. I think this is so important to have people like you who are kind, who want to teach other people, who embrace young generations because that's the obviously the only way uh, how to survive. Anyhow, Philip, thank you so much for your time. I have really enjoyed that we have been speaking almost for two hours uh, and there have been a lot of uh, comments and, and from, from a lot of important dog people from all around the world. Uh, uh, many of your friends obviously will see also the interview later on because as we know now it's in the middle of the night uh, in India. Um, uh, I want to thank you for, for, uh, uh, for accepting my invitation and uh, before I say that uh, next Wednesday, my guest is going to be uh, Crafts 2021 Best in Show Judge uh, Anne Ingram from Ireland. Um, I want to ask you to say a few last words to all the people who were watching the, the interview tonight. You want me to say? 
Yes, you can say a few last words to. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. I think the dog game has given me a tremendous world of its own. It's the only hobby now that has been left with me. I, I started life with getting in, was interested in theater, being on the stage, and quite a few things. But I finally dropped everything and stayed. The only dog hobby uh, it is a hobby is my dog and dog shows. My interest is basically um, from a tea world. I moved to the IT world. We used to make websites and so on. Um, and I was also head of in educational institutions and um, also part of uh, a new life church. So my interests are varied. Uh, dog and dog shows are not 100% of my world but it's an important part of my world and it's my hobby. Um, I am so thrilled to have friends from all over the world because of this hobby. And um, each one is valuable to me. And um, I am available to any anyone who is interested in my 44 years in dogs. <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, welcome anytime. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much uh, for the honor of uh, you are very being welcome. on an interview with you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I have really enjoyed it, and uh, uh, as many people who are who are here. Um, and uh, for example, we have last few comments. Soli say thank you both for yet another fantastic Wednesday evening. Laura saying thank you. Brina saying thank you so much for this talk. Sabine saying. Um, Thank you uh, for a very interesting interview. Good night. Jonas saying thank you for the evening. Yuli, thank you both for another very nice interview. Patricia saying so interesting to watch you both and listening too. So uh, I'm very happy that once again we have, uh, we have had an interesting talk. Uh, thank you so much, Philip. Thank you, everybody who was watching. And uh, good night to everyone. See you next Wednesday with uh, my guest, Anne Ingram from Ireland. Good night.